Hey, welcome back to Diecast Cars. So today, guys, we are going to be talking about diecast chase pieces, the ones that you can find at the retail stores nowadays. And I know everybody is familiar with Super Treasure Hunts. I mean, that is the bread and butter of all the collectors and all the chase hunters out there. But did you guys know that there is up to 15 different diecast chase pieces out there? And if you didn't know that, you got to pay attention to this video because I'm going to go through all 15 of them and i'm gonna rank them from 15 all the way to number one the best chase that you can find at your retail stores so let's get right to it starting at the very bottom number 15 has to be monster jam chase pieces and this is kind of twofold so first off there is the mini mystery packs right so you can go to the store you'll see these boxes that sit kind of kitty corner from the hot wheels and the matchbox You'll see these little black Monster Jam mini bags inside of these boxes. And if you look on the side, you can see that there are actually four chase models out of the series. And how these chase pieces are categorized, there is the gold card, which is the unspoken chase chase of the whole entire set. There is a chrome body mini truck. There is a clear body mini truck. And then there is a clear chassis chase and that is true for at least the last couple of series of monster jam minis that is actually made by spin master and when you get one of these pieces in hand like this monster mutt gold chase piece from series 12 you'll notice that everything is actually plastic the body the chassis the wheels but if you look underneath you'll actually see there is this internal chassis piece that is die cast metal so I'm sure it's the right amount to be considered die cast or at least categorized as such but nonetheless it's still cool it's still a chase piece and the coolest thing about these chase pieces which kind of a double-edged sword also makes it number 15 on the list is that these are very readily available easy to find I mean nobody ever chases monster jam and I don't honestly understand it monster jam is pretty awesome it's part of the automotive industry obviously it's more on the entertainment side it appeals more to kids i'll admit that but at the same time it's pretty awesome can't complain about thousand horsepower engines monster trucks with big wheels doing all kinds of aerial acrobatics and from a value standpoint these monster jam minis they sit pretty consistent on the secondary market right now selling anywhere from 10 to 15 dollars and that's true for all the previous series as well too but again as Monster Jam continues to gain popularity within the diecast world, within the real world, can't imagine these pieces aren't going to go up. And then there's also Spin Master Monster Jam 164 scale chase pieces. And these have been around since about 2018, 2019. Every year, the chase series of the releases are a little bit different. Here for 2023, they chose to do all non-existent food truck monster jam chase pieces i mean it's easy to spot these in the wild but it is unfortunate they're not real monster trucks but this one i really do like because my wife and i absolutely love sushi so the wasabi warrior it's even got an opening flap you can see what's on the menu for the day i also really enjoy the fact that the even the wheels the big giant bkt tires I mean, it basically looks like a sushi roll. You got the seaweed on the outside, the white rice sidewall, and then you got your salmon or whatever kind of raw fish you like. But this is pretty awesome, and the graphics on this are pretty slick. I mean, look at that. The chopsticks down, all the little sushi rolls. I mean, this is pretty awesome. Oh, and you got a giant, what is that, tuna or salmon on the other side as well, too. But again... This right now, secondary market right now, is sitting about that $10 to $15 price point. And again, that's consistent with all the chase pieces that have come out in the past couple of years. And speaking of sushi trucks, we move on to number 14 on the countdown, which also has another sushi truck chase piece. And that is Hot Wheels Treasure Hunts. This being the Quick Bite Ryu Asada inspired sushi food truck from 2018. One of my all-time favorite treasure hunts. I think we can all agree that the feasibility of getting a treasure hunt is 
pretty good. I mean, it's about a 90% chance if you find a case that you're going to get a treasure hunt. A lot of times, collectors really just pass up on treasure hunts as well too. So I've found a number of them just sitting on the pegs. Even this year alone, I mean, as late as I go to the stores, I'm still fortunate enough to find treasure hunts hanging on the pegs. Part of that reason is because treasure hunts aren't always licensed models. You do get fantasy casts. You do get cartoony fantasy licensed casts as well too. So there's no rhyme or reason when it comes to treasure hunts. On top of that, secondary market sitting pretty low at about three to five dollars. You know, when they're initially released, kind of like this 22B, they do spike up in value quite a bit. I remember this one selling at about 10 to 15 dollars, but nowadays you can get this pretty easily at about a three dollar price point number 13 on the countdown you got muscle machines and this is the new generation of muscle machines that's actually produced by maisto who bought out the original muscle machines like this from the early 2000s which it just makes me sad when i look at these because i wish they would bring this era of die cast and muscle machines back but what we have are these and how you know that these are the chase pieces is that you can look for this double M here on the fender. For the most part, all of their chase pieces have that logo there in that location. The chase pieces for these cars really aren't going for a, a whole lot, guys. They're right around that 10 to $15 price point, really depending on the model of the car. I will say that I am rather disappointed with these muscle machines just because I don't feel like they kept true to how muscle machines used to be back in the day. I mean, they are very cartoony, which kind of throws off a lot of collectors. They do have a lot of licensing, which is great, but I feel like the execution is pretty poor. They are die cast body, but the chassis is plastic. They have a lot of good details with the wheels but no interiors they kind of cheap out on that sense right but nonetheless they're chase pieces they're out there they're not super hard to find but i will say they're probably a little bit more difficult to find than hot wheels treasure hunts and monster jam chase pieces number 12 in the countdown is green light green machines so undeniable chase pieces as long as you see this bright metallic green paint you can see my two examples here the only two green machines that i have in my collection you got the kings of crunch bigfoot with the green wheels and actually some green chassis bars as well too and then you got this workshop with the green metallic doors and a bunch of green cabinets on the inside green light is all part of the round two product family and although i feel like quality has definitely stepped up in the past couple of years i know prior to that's been one of the biggest gripes with green light in general is just that there is just very odd off-putting casts you got weird wheel gaps and these cars in all honesty i've opened a few they don't roll really well to be perfectly honest too with the green light brand if it's not a chase piece i won't even really consider buying it and having said that I've definitely left green light, green machines just sitting on the pegs because from a secondary market standpoint, guys, they're just not very fluid. They're not very liquid. People don't really look for them. They're not really willing to buy them or trade for them. So if you're not a diehard green light fan, it's, it's hard to pick them up to try to move them secondary market price points you're looking at anywhere from ten dollars to forty dollars just depends on the cast and that's the other thing when it comes to green light too there's no rhyme or reason to any of their releases i mean you get workshops like this you get kings of crunch monster trucks you get hollywood movie cars you get police interceptors you get big trucks with dualies boats war machines i mean anything and everything under the sun that counts as an automobile or anything associated to automobiles it'll be released in green light and i think that kind of puts off a lot of collectors because there's just too much to collect number 11 on the diecast chase countdown it's got to be authentic nascar liquid chase pieces and these things are pretty slick when you do find them and you get them in hand that liquid color, it's pretty awesome. It's like a frosted 
Spectra Flame paint. And the thing that I really like about these NASCAR chase pieces is that it's essentially triple or quadruple licensed. I mean, you got NASCAR, you got the brand it's associated to, like for example, in this case, it's Castrol. You got the brand of the car, which in this case is a Ford Mustang. And then on top of that, you got the brand of the driver himself, right? So in this case, Brad Kozlowski. I mean, it really helps if you are a NASCAR fan, if you collect these and find these, because I think the fun thing with these is that if Brad Kozlowski were to win the NASCAR Cup, for example, I could see a piece like this from an investment side of things go sky high, guys. So that's the really cool thing about NASCAR Authentics. On top of that, I will also say that they aren't the easiest to find. They do get stocked up at Walmart's Targets, Myers. I'm sure Hobby Lobby might have them here and there, but at the same time, they're stocked up one case at a time. I feel like the cars that aren't chases really just sit on the pegs for weeks at a time. So when you do find a chase, it's actually pretty thrilling. And the secondary market standpoint on these, I mean, again, it's very driver and car based, but they're sitting anywhere from $15 to $25 with a good amount of potential. Breaking into the top 10, we got number 10 Hot Wheels Monster Trucks. And this is, in all honesty, a bit of a speculative rank for me because Hot Wheels Monster Trucks up to this point really hasn't been much to write home about. But as of late, guys, we're starting to see a lot of very familiar casts in monster truck form, a lot like this Back to the Future DeLorean. We're also going to be seeing a Nissan Skyline in two variations already. We got one that is not a chase piece in the Fast and the Furious silver iconic blue tampo. And then also a chase piece that will be out very soon if not already a nissan nismo r34 red black and blue it looks really sharp that one secondary market it's already sitting in that 50 dollars price point this back to the future delorean only sitting at that 15 dollars price point and i would say that's about more where monster truck chase pieces have been as of late but with these more popular casts coming out in monster truck form like the Nissan Skyline, I could see monster truck chase pieces being very popular, very sought after, and have a very high secondary market price moving forward. Number 9 of the countdown, you got Hot Wheels Mystery Models. These are Walmart exclusives, which makes them a little bit more difficult to find. That. On top of the fact that anything Hot Wheels nowadays just gets gobbled up by collectors. They're very keen on anything Hot Wheels, especially these mystery models and the chase pieces, which you can find on the side of the box here. The top three cars listed in this case, number three chase is a Porsche 356. The number two chase piece is the 98 Super Impreza WRX STI 22B, which I'm excited about this one and I can't wait to get it open. And then the number one chase car is the 71 Dotson 510 Bluebird. So let's get these opened up just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This one is the number three chase piece. Inside this bag, you do get a handy dandy sticker. Just been pointing that you got the number three chase car and you get the Porsche 356 in this nice teal color the number two chase piece here this should be the 22b and that it is and man it looks great in this road rally graphic theme here black base it's got the big 22 on the top and it is car number two too so pretty awesome how they played that one out and then the chase piece the number one car out of the set the Datsun 510 and this amber orange looks great 71 signified on the side of the car coming out the box at just a dollar retail price secondary market price can definitely soar up to 15 to 20 dollars depending on the cast and the model and guys it's no doubt that this Datsun 510 will definitely reach those heights as we've seen before on a number of other mystery model chase pieces for example the 4 gt matte black came out in 2018 this one sitting in that 20 dollars price range and then this lamborghini huracan super trofeo again another nice matte black mystery chase model 
looks great and reflected so on the secondary market sitting around that $20 price point. And then there's M2 coming in at number 8 on the countdown list and to be perfectly frank guys, I really don't like M2. I honestly wouldn't put it on this countdown list other than the fact that I have, feel like I have an obligation to the collecting community to put it on this list because there are many collectors out there for M2 and M2 is definitely something that is on my feed every day of chase pieces that are found or new castings that M2 is looking to replicate from Hot Wheels or some other sought after brand. But I am not a fan and it's purely due to the quality of M2s. So, I mean, just look at that. Look at that giant wheel gap. Look at the wheel width. These look like wheelbarrow tires and they're so skinny. And this is a Chevy Impala. One thing that I do not understand the fascination with from collectors as well as M2 is why do they always have to use some kind of beverage company as their tampo decals like fanta and coca-cola and sprite and that has nothing to do with cars and yet these are very collectible people always reference the coca-cola chases from m2 but besides the point this is in fact a chase you can tell by the chrome bumpers here in red Sometimes it's gold chrome, sometimes it's blue chrome. And the one good thing I would say about M2 is that they do keep their production quantities down pretty low. So this is a regular M2. You can see that this skyline here is actually out of 7,000 pieces. That's about typical, you know, five to 7,000 pieces is about their normal production run quantities. And then their chase pieces are in that 250 to 500, or I've seen like, 750 as well too. Uh, I should mention that 250 for the most part are their ultra rare raw chases as well too. So you have that going for you if you're looking to collect all of a certain release. And I honestly believe that the fascination and the collectability of M2s is purely just based on those quantities that they merchandise these collectibles as. They're very low compared to all the other competition out there. But again, it just doesn't do it for me. But besides that, guys, value-wise, these things definitely do have value. And again, it definitely ranges and it really depends on the cast of the car. I see them selling on the secondary market anywhere from $10 to $30. And for the right model, you'll even see them go up to $100, $100 plus. One example out there that is a hot topic right now are the square body syndicates those right now if you can find a chase out of 500 that's selling on the secondary market for about 150 dollars if you can find the ultra rare dark wheel and dark paint variations that one is selling right now on the secondary market for 250 to 300 dollars so there's definitely an investment play with m2 chase pieces but i personally do not really care for them if i find them i'll definitely pick them up as trade bait but that's really it when it comes to m2 moving on to lucky number seven we got mini gt and i know what you're thinking guys mini gt isn't very mainstream we don't find it at walmart's and targets it's not something that's readily available for every collector to go out there and get but i will say that the times are changing a little bit i feel like there's enough hobby shops and hobby dealers out there all that have accessibility to mini gt and make it available for consumers which is why i felt it was fair to put on the list but because it's not very mainstream at least not yet that is why it is still lower on the totem pole compared to hot wheels and matchbox and auto world etc but it's no doubt that mini gt has definitely made a name for itself over the last three to four years i mean their castings have definitely shown that they can keep up with the big boys they put a lot of detail and attention to all the work that they create and i will say that their partnerships have really edged them out against a lot of competition at least in the hobby space take for instance the kaido house collaboration that mini gt did with june and Mai. i mean these things are a work of art and from a value standpoint mini gt raw chases 
definitely compete with the rest of the market as far as value right now average secondary market price is around that $50 price point and again very model and casting dependent as far as what the value would be the one thing i will say about mini gts that i have noticed especially with the chase pieces is that the values do tend to drop over time so again i picked this up for 110 dollars right now it's sitting at about 75 inching closer and closer to the average target value of about 50 dollars for mini gt and number six on the list is racing champions mint and their chase models the gold strike so these are all from the round two family so along the lines of auto world green light johnny lightnings etc i mean you can tell they have a lot of shared castings across all of those different brands and racing champions has always been my favorite for the plymouth superbird this is my very first gold strike this is one of the chases that i have never found in person in the wild before and that's a big part of why it is number six on my list is just due to the scarcity of racing champions i mean in my area alone there are only two stores that sell racing champions and that is myers and hobby lobby so basically your mainstream stores walmart's targets you know even to your dollar trees and dollar generals etc they do not carry racing champions so it's almost a rarity but as far as the gold strikes themselves what i love about them is that they do have a limited number from a mainline standpoint so you can see this release from 2018 only came in a quantity of 2500 so that is both the gold strike as well as the regular mainline in the blue but the gold strikes themselves again introduced in 2018 you can see in the wording there it is limited to only two percent of the overall production so two percent of 2500 there is only 50 of these petty plymouth superbirds out there in the world and i have one of them in hand right now this new age of racing champion and another reason why their chase pieces aren't in the top five of my countdown list here is because they are centered around a lot of usdm cars so a lot of muscle cars you got your gm your chevrolet your plymouths your fords etc i mean if they were to tap into the euro or the jdm or the exotic scene when it came to their cars and let's say that they continue to ramp up gold strikes just like this plymouth superbird I mean, man, their popularity would soar. Just imagine if they were to pull like a Johnny Lightning EK9 casting and made it a gold strike. I mean, that would remind you a lot like this gold nugget Hot Wheels EK9 Super Treasure Hunt that we saw. I mean, it'd probably give this EK9 Super a run for its money. So round two, I hope you're listening because I think you could definitely step in the ring with this bad boy right here. If you utilize this gold strike chase the right way moving on to number five we got matchbox's answer to the super treasure hunt the matchbox super chase and here i have one of the more popular releases as of the last couple of years that the super chase has even existed this is the porsche 911 gt3 looks really sleek in this black with the red yellow and orange colors you know that it is a super chase with this little m logo that's right here in the circle there and the one thing about these super chases is that for some reason they all share the same real rider wheels which you can kind of take them with a grain of salt but i think the allure with these chase pieces is that it's matchbox it's a household name when it comes to die cast cars it's a brand that everybody's familiar with so these will definitely have popularity moving forward even though they are relatively new they're going to continue to be a classic moving forward right now secondary market price on these they're all around that 30 dollars price point even this porsche as high as it was when it was originally released up to 50 60 dollars right now tapered down to a consistent 30 dollars and that's pretty much where all the other super chases are 
Now I will say that the Super Chase lineup for Matchbox will definitely continue to grow and it'll get a lot more visibility and be sought after moving forward just given that they are expanding the Super Chases over to their moving parts lineup as well too and who knows maybe they'll add it to their working rigs and all the other pack formats that they offer as well too so keep an eye out for Matchbox when it comes to the Chase category. Number four, we got Johnny Lightning, White Lightnings. These are honestly some of my favorite diecast chases out there. Quality wise, I feel like it's pretty decent. You know, there are some questionable tires and wheel options that Johnny Lightning puts on their castings, but if you can ignore that and just kind of look at the cast and look at all the details of the card, the card art, all these little fun facts that I really enjoy reading on all of these cards, Johnny Lightning is honestly one of the premier mainstream diecast chases that you can get there. And the one that I have in hand here, it is in fact Chad Reed's own trailer queen Honda Civic EK9 that he puts into these 24 hours of lemons endurance racing. Now I do have to admit that this being within the top five and being so high up the totem pole is because I'm very partial to the color white. You guys know that this past summer I just picked up a Toyota GR86 in a pearl white and that is one of the signature things about Johnny Lightning White Lightnings is that they do come in a really nice alluring pearl metallic white paint that is their signature for all of their white lightnings and I really just enjoy that because I feel like cars in white always look the best and showcase their details the best as well and as far as releases goes Johnny Lightning does a really nice balance of stock cars how they look like from the factory to these wild cars they even dabble within a little bit of the more cartoony side like zingers and as of late they've even put out the manga series where they had a nissan skyline r34 with all of this picturesque anime art graphics on it so they really honestly do remind me a lot of Hot Wheels who also does a lot of those things stock cars all the way to cartoon cars and from a value standpoint well on average I would say that Johnny Lightning white lightnings typically sell for 20 to 30 dollars that's really dependent on the castings as with any other brand but there are definitely those casts that really take the collectors by storm and definitely can reach up to those 50 60 even a hundred dollar price points counting down to number three on the list is auto world ultra reds and these are quickly becoming one of my favorite brands because they have made such huge strides in the last couple of years especially with their new toolings adding in a bunch of jdm cars like this mark IV toyota supra which I still believe is one of the best valued 164 Mark IV Toyota Supras on the market from a diecast standpoint. And I'm really partial to these ultra red Toyota Supras at this point. I mean, I've basically had every single ultra red Toyota Supra that's been released. And I think the really cool thing about ultra reds and auto world chase pieces is that there is levels and tiers to all of their collectibles for example this release you got the jewel green pearl toyota supra mainline the next level up you get the ultra red and if you're very lucky and you're very die hard when it comes to collecting these you can opt for the ultra raw which these are always numbered out of 10 when it comes to their ultra raw chases so very hard to find and honestly it just makes you very proud to even own one of these things but on top of that guys like i said they've been adding on a lot of new tools that make the brand very intriguing from a collector standpoint take for example this 1982 Toyota Celica Supra this being the first release and released in style if you ask me a JCC exclusive collaboration with Lamley Group and this one is from the JCC classic car show 
autographed by Chad Reed and Landley Group himself. So very proud to own something like this. And this is essentially next level collecting that I think Auto World has implemented into their diecast releases, which is very commendable. And again, the reason why Auto World is number three on the list. But from an ultra red value standpoint on the secondary market, they all hover around a 30 to 35 dollar price point. That's essentially what this Supra is going for as well as other notable ultra red releases. And then stepping into the ultra raw chase category, these are selling on the secondary market for around $350 as a baseline. And from there, they just skyrocket. Depending on the cast, it could reach up to $500, $600. And the silver medal here, number two on the countdown, is Hot Wheels Premium, zero out of five chases. And need I say anything about these? I mean, they are ever popular, even though they've only been around for two years. This is really only the second year we've had premium chases from Hot Wheels, but they have taken the collecting community by storm. Folks are just hunting head over heels to try to find these and they aren't easy to find even though they are available at a number of retailers you know basically all of your mainstream walmart's targets i've seen people find them at kroger's but their availability or at least potential availability does not keep these from being highly sought after and from a secondary market standpoint i mean it's no joke guys fifty dollars a piece and we all know the story with the Liberty Walk ER34. This is sitting right now in the secondary market for 250 plus latest sales in the 270 to 80 range. And the moment you guys have all been waiting for with so much anticipation. But in all honesty, you guys probably guessed what the number one die cast chase piece is. It is no doubt hot wheels super treasure hunts this is the point of market entry when it comes to die cast cars is hot wheels chase pieces this is your first gut check if this is the hobby for you and this is what gets you excited to wake up in the morning and go hunting i mean it's not just a dollar car guys it's a culture it is a following I mean, this has such a lineage, such a nostalgic feel for all the diecast collectors. And these chase pieces, even though they don't have all the details as a lot of the aforementioned diecast chase pieces, it's still the collector favorite because of the brand recognition that Hot Wheels brings with these cars. And the two examples that I have for you guys here today, we do have the 2024 a case ford escort in this green as well as the last super treasure hunt q case for 2023 the volvo 240 both of these essentially in the same spectra flame green and from a secondary market standpoint hot wheels super treasure hunch they range anywhere from 25 dollars and have the potential to going up to 100 150 dollars like we've seen with the Datsun 510 wagon that just released here 2023 in the P case it just depends on the trends and the castings that get released so I would say that hands down Hot Wheels Super Treasure Hunts have the most investing potential when it comes to die cast chase piece I mean it's absurd the potential of 20 xing 100 xing the money that you put into this and again you're basically playing penny stocks because you're only putting in a dollar at a time it's unbelievable guys man and seeing these two green super treasure hunts together it's really inspired me i feel like they need a third partner there we go r34 super treasure hunt unboxed now we got a party it's a green party and you guys know die cash cars we love the color green here but there it is there you have it the number one die cash chase piece surprise for surprise but not really a surprise hot wheels super treasure hunts so there you have it all top 15 die cast chases all ranked from 15 all the way up to number one how many of these have you found in your retail stores or hobby shops? Which ones do you own? Which ones are your favorites? Leave them down in the comments below. Like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time on Die Cash Cars.